Muslim Umar of Southwest Nigeria. We have him in our midst. Um, I was with Baba sometimes recently in the, at the University of Ibadan, where a birthday uh, lecture was organized in his honor. And listening to him again, uh, I felt that um, we have the privilege to continue to have him in our midst. And we should seize on those opportunities during this particular Ramadan. May Allah, in his infinite mercy, grant Baba good health and long life such that we can continue to learn from his feet and he continue to pass on his knowledge and wisdom to the entire Huma. Um, I have nothing much to say um, because uh, I would rather that we all spend our time listening to Baba, his understanding of Islam, especially he chose the topic himself, by the way, uh, because I think uh, he has views and Typical of him, I've been listening to Baba since my undergraduate days in 1986. Um, his one voice that is constant, his one voice of knowledge and wisdom mixed with contemporary uh, development that allows we Muslims to continue to find um, how best to be good Muslims, even with the Western world in which we have found ourselves. We are happy to have you in Amin, sir. And then I will just pass on the debating to you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Audhu billahi minna shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. All praise is due to Almighty Allah, Lord and Sustainer of the Universe. We give, we give thanks to him for sparing our lives, those enabling us to witness yet another Ramadan on earth and in a conducive national atmosphere. I begin in his glorious name and seek his choicest blessings for our leader, his final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his entire household and companions. Coming at the tail end of the 2023 national elections in Nigeria, with all the excitements that they generated, the ongoing Ramadan fasts must be special to us in this country. It provides yet another opportunity for us to give thanks to him for his mercies and to pray most fervently for his guidance and support for our new leaders and the whole nation. But perhaps more importantly, we should consider it a rare opportunity to reflect on the lessons of the Ramadan fasts for us as individuals and as one indivisible ummah, not just in this nation, but indeed the whole world. The Arabic word for fast, Sawm or Siyam, literally means al imsak, that is self restraint. Allah informs us in Quran chapter, two, chapter uh, 19, verse 26, that when Mary, mother of Jesus, peace be on him, got worried about what to say to her people as to how she came about having a child without being married, she was divinely instructed to say to anyone that she met, 
I have vowed to the most gracious to do a song so that I would not speak to any human being today. That was part of the divine plan, which was to get baby Jesus, peace be on him, to speak whilst in the cradle in defense of his mother. By the way, that reminds me of a related event. At the, at the end of a guest lecture that I delivered at the Anglican Cathedral at Portsmouth, a city in Southern England back in 1993, the canon in charge who was my host and who presided at the occasion expressed amazement at the fact that such a miracle of Jesus was mentioned in the Quran, but not in the Bible. Now, before Mary, Prophet Zachariah, peace be on him, is reported to have been instructed by Allah to carry out this very form of fasting. He was directed to abstain from speaking to any person for a period of three days. So the real essence of Saum or Siyam or fasting in Islam is self-restraint. Self-restraint, self-discipline in a determined effort to remain pious at all times and be conscious of accountability to Allah at the end of the day for everything that one does or fails to do in the life of this world, the life on earth. That supreme purpose is declared unequivocally at the end of the ayah or verse of the Quran where Allah prescribed fasting, that is Surah 2, Ayah 183. This Islamic teaching of self-restraint or self-discipline began with Allah's instruction to the first man, that is Adam, peace be on him, and his wife, to beware of Iblis, that is Shaitan, that is Satan, and his plans to leave the, his plans to lead them astray. Unfortunately, Adam and his wife lost guard. As Allah tells us in Quran, Surah 20, Ayah 155, 115. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Adam had forgotten all about this warning and had no resolve. And we all know what happened in the garden consequently. However, they repented sincerely and Allah granted them pardon, though they had to leave the garden and descend onto the earth by Allah's command, as we read in Surah 2, Ayah, 20, Ayah 37 of the Quran. Now, on plant, planet Earth, they needed guidance as to how to navigate life on Earth. So, Allah assured them that, that and their offspring, He had showed them and their offsprings of guidance coming to him, as stated in Surah 2, Ayah 38 and 39, and Surah 20, Ayah 123. That is, guidance coming from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from time to time through prophets and the scriptures that they brought for mankind. 
it is significant that the Quran, the last of the scriptures that Almighty Allah sent for the guidance of mankind, was sent down in the month of Ramadan. The month in which fasting was uh, destined to be prescribed. Thus, fasting is closely linked to the overriding ob obligation to, of March. So at, or to at, adhere strictly to the guidance co contained in the final, final message of the Quran, which is like the user's guide or the manual. For without such a link, humanity was bound to be lost as the misleading strategies of the sh shaitan could be overwhelming. Hence, the ultimate goal of fasting in Islam is that you may remain God conscious, that you may be God conscious. As stated in Surah 2, Ayah 183 of the Quran. As a means of guiding against falling prey to the deceit of the shaitan, as our father Adam and his wife Hawa were, had done, Ramadan fasts were designed to help human beings to strengthen their resolve to obey Allah at all times, not the shaitan, no matter the temptation. Whatever the challenges we face in this life, our recourse should be to the guidance sent to us by Allah in fulfillment of his promise. And the personal self-restraint, self-discipline, as it tends to strengthen one's resolve to steer clear of anything forbidden or discouraged by Islam. You are able to keep away from food, drink, and some other legitimate things during the day while fasting. Isn't that clear proof? that you do have the ability to say no when confronted with the temptation to do things forbidden by Allah. Hence, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man lam yada'a qawla zuri wal amala bi, falaysa lillahi khajatun fi an yada'a ta'amahu wa sharabahu. Meaning, let him who fails to give up falsehood, be it in word or deed, know that Allah is in no need for his giving up his food or drink. He also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rubba Sa'imin Laisalahu Min Suyamihi Illa Jua. Some person fasting may derive, derive no benefit from his fast other than hunger. So in Ramadan, obedience must be earned at all times. For example, never you go near the consumption of intoxicants. That is the kind of drink or drug that is capable of making you lose your reason for your own good and for that of the society. For surely drugs or any other kind of intoxicants breed criminality in the society. Besides the fact that they destroy the human being themselves. Say, so you should also say no to the embezzlement of public funds or funds that belong to others 
They should also say no to corruption in the judiciary, as Allah makes clear in the Quran, Surah 2, Ayah 188. Rasulullah said, Inna Allaha tayyibun wa la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is pure and good and accepts nothing except that which is pure and good. You should also say no to cheating others for there are painful consequences in the hereafter for those who do this as stated in the Quran chapter 83 verse 4. You should also say no to banditry, kidnapping, and the like, as they are severely punished in the hereafter, as stated in the Quran and 34. And as a means, means of discouraging usury, which Allah forbids, let the relevant authorities provide facilities for interest-free banking and financial activities. Now, at the global level, it is significant to, uh, to note that uh, the fact that Ramadan begins this year so soon after the end the 19 of, of, of the 2023 uh, um, elections. But also, we note that it begins only 20 days after the United Nations marked for the first time in its history the International Day for Combating Islamophobia. And that day is the 3rd of March every year, beginning from this year. Islamophobia is an English word, meaning dislike of or prejudice against Islam and Muslims, especially as a political force. The negative attitude against Islam in the Christian world dates back to the periods of the early contacts between the Muslims as the periods of the Crusades and eight centuries. Of Islamic civilization, it was from the Muslims that Europe and architecture, European writers on Islam became very hostile to Islam and Muslims. Orientalism is a well-known culture of hostility up to this day. Modern Western journalism is deeply influenced by that culture. This attitude has had its political expression the emergence and spread of the so-called Islamic extremism is traceable to the role of the Western powers who secretly sponsored such a movement as an alibi for military attack on the Muslim world. They use this as um, an alibi to attack Muslim countries, such as Indonesia and Iraq. Recent studies and publications in the, West, in the US and other parts of the West have proven that the terrorist attacks on the United States on September 9 were the handiwork of the government of that country. Similarly, it has been admitted in the West that the claim that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction was a false allied alibi for the planned military attack against that country. Muslims have been victims of Islamophobia in Europe 
and some other parts of the world for a fairly long time. But the peak was the attack on the innocent worshipers at a mosque in Christchurch in New Zealand on the 3rd of March, 2019, many lives were lost. Incidentally, the Imam of the mosque Sheikh, Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, police in New Zealand are urging people to stay off the streets and to avoid mosques in the coming hours after mass shootings at two mosques in the city of Christchurch. At least 49 people are dead, many others seriously wounded. This happened around 1.40 in the afternoon local time, the busiest day of the week for many mosques when worshippers gather for Friday prayers. One man who witnessed the shooting at Dean's Avenue told reporters how he and others hid under cars and tried to jump the fence to escape. Which was from the main entrance, the main entrance of the building. Everybody just run to the back doors just to save themselves. We saw many injured bullets in arms and guns everywhere. One woman got car and she was just lying on the road. CNN's Matt Rivers is development. He joins us again. And Matt, in the last 30 minutes, you heard it live here in CNN. Updates from the New Zealand Police Commissioner about the suspects and the death toll. And slowly but surely, Christy, uh, we heard from the, the Prime Minister herself uh, a bit before we heard from the Police Commissioner, and the facts keep getting worse. Uh, frankly, 49 people now confirmed dead, 41 of whom, according to the Police Commissioner, were killed at a mosque on Dean's Avenue in Christchurch, seven more killed at the mosque on Linwood Avenue, and of the 40 people that were being treated at a hospital. In Christchurch, one of them uh, has died so far. Given though uh, the amount of people in that hospital, don't know, uh, but it is uh, already a horrific number. Forty-nine people uh, have been killed so far. As for the people uh, who have committed uh, these crimes, according to the police commissioner, one man, white male in his late twenties, as he was described to the media, has been charged with murder. He will appear likely in court tomorrow morning. Uh, in New Zealand. Three others throughout the day today have been uh, apprehended as a part of this investigation, according to the police commissioner. One of those people, uh, although all three uh, were uh, carrying firearms or some sort of weapon uh, and were in the vicinity of these attacks, it appears that one of the three had nothing to do with the incident. Uh, and police are still talking to the other two people uh, who uh, to try and figure out uh, what they were doing in the area uh, with weapons at the time. According to the police, no other threats at this moment. They're not actively looking for anyone else, but they stressed uh, that they are very much maintaining vigilance, not only in Christchurch, but around the country. They're also still working on uh, uh, disarming an IED uh, that was found on one of the vehicles uh, that was used in these attacks. Initially, we were told that there were IEDs on multiple vehicles, but police clarified that statement in this latest press conference, Christy, saying that there were two IEDs found on one of the vehicles. One of them has been disarmed already. They are working on doing the other one. Matt, warnings have been issued to members of the Muslim community in the wake of these attacks. Mm -hmm. What kind of warnings have police issued to, to the Islamic community in Christchurch and across New Zealand? I mean, they're basically saying hunker down. They're basically saying, uh, don't go visit one another, stay at home, keep doors locked, uh, try and avoid the threat that could come with any sort of copycat attack. Now, again, police are not saying uh, that they are anticipating other attacks, but they say it's never safe to assume anything. And, and so they are warning not only the Muslim community, but New Zealand at large to stay at home tonight. And the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, she has been providing updates throughout the day in addition to providing key information about these shootings, she has also been trying to console a nation that has been reeling in the back.
of these sickening attacks, what has been her message? Uh, her message is that this is not New Zealand becoming immigrants uh, recently. I mean, the, this is a kind of the world that accepts members of the Muslim community and encourages them. Because as she said, is that these attack that, that the attacker or attackers, uh, depending on how this shakes out, uh, may have chosen New Zealand, uh, but that New Zealand utterly rejects these attacks. That's that's where her words in a press conference. You can see the emotion in her face. You can see her struggling with this, as everyone uh, in New Zealand likely is at this point. Um, but the, her message is that this is not who we are, and that. They should, people should be compassionate to one another tonight, that people should bond together, uh, and that they should New Zealand's uh, of the people of New Zealand uh, be, be tarnished uh, by this is not who New Zealand is. Yeah, this isn't together. Matt Reverse reporting, thank you. As you have seen, brothers and sisters, it was a very terrific experience, wasn't it? That was the experience of We seem to um, be losing, uh, I mean, we seem to be having challenges with the network connection for prop there. Um, just give us a few seconds, I'll try and get him back. Thank you. I'm still waiting to for Prof to join back. Um, we're trying to get him back. Um, please give us um, a minute or two, please.
apologies once again. I've reached out to the um, team supporting him, and um, they are trying to get another network in there. Um, so they want to get another network in there at that area. Okay, so we have the prof back. Um, um, apologies for the glitch. Uh, prof, we can see your screen now and then you can enable your video so that um, you can continue, sir. I guess you understand that the human imperfection is to blame. Not that, sir. Yes, we do. Thank you. So, as brothers and sisters, Um, the um, the chief imam of the mosque, uh, Sheikh Abdul Latif Al Abi, had, had a meeting with us recently. An organization that uh, is um, a collectivity of. Nigerian Muslims are at home and abroad. Uh, he participated in the international virtual discussion that uh, we organized to mark the occasion recently. Now, the very person perseverance of the Muslims in the face of those various acts of aggression had paid off in the rise 
of the internet courts. The United Nations declared of March every year as a day an end to Islamophobia. That it pays to be fine, particularly in the month he was so long directed that in Muslim, the latter should reply with perseverance and patience, saying, Inni saw him, inni saw him. Meaning, indeed, I am fasting. Indeed, I am fasting. Now, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world today, despite Islamophobia. Right, a lot of them have, of course, different reasons of how they were first introduced to Islam. Uh, many of them I talked to, they first studied it on their own out of curiosity. And after studying it, they um, have peace and joy themselves. 20,000 Americans every year decide to convert to Islam. These converts say they don't regret this at all. Growing numbers of young Australian men and women who are converting to Islam. One of the world's largest religions is gaining followers from a very unlikely community. A growing number of Hispanics are changing their religion and following the teachings of Islam. Generalement, des jeunes et de culture ou de foi chrétienne choisissent de devenir musulmans. To a report by Faith Matters, the UK is seeing a surge in Brits converting to Islam. In the last year, around 5,200 people in Britain converted to Islam, as many as have converted in the last decade. It's the world's fastest growing religion. Islam is the world's Islam is going to eventually become a dominant faith. What is Islam? How big Islam is capital city. Some must even the people converted to Islam in the UK. The number of converted Muslims in Norway increased to at least 3,000 in recent papers. Statistics Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. Um, um, Salam alaikum, Prof. Um, because of the bad network, the video is not actually shared to us very well. Um, if you can actually stop sharing the VN the video and as well your own video too, um, so that the network can be better. Share if you are there. Um, share if you are there. Just um, tell Prof not to share his video. And um, this one, maybe we can just go with the lectures and uh, the the network is glitching, so we're not. Um, we want to conserve the bandwidth. The network is glitching, and we want to conserve the bandwidth. But you can share the screen. Um, screen will not take so much network. But the prof can stop sharing the okay. video. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Let's stop share. Okay. Share his own video. So continue that, uh, with the lecture, sir. Okay. Thank you. We need to conserve the bandwidth. That's why I made that suggestion. Thank you. Okay. We can continue, sir. Okay. okay. Can you see our screen now? Um, Prof can continue talking. We can't see your screen yet, but the, the okay. video feed for Prof, you can. No. Turn it Okay, don't worry, I've, I've turned his dog off. I've turned the video off and then Prof can start talking. He can talk, he can talk through his presentation. Uh, brother, 
sisters. I am sure that you agree with me that that rapid spread of Islam cannot be attributed to the use of force as it is generally As I was saying, brothers in the West, B, I it is a food triumph. Stated in the Quran, Surah 60, 61. So rather, rather, rather than react angrily against the perpetrated Muslims and brotherhood, so there are brethren in different parts of the world who are victims. For example, Muslims near China and the Myanmar fairly and unjustly, like the way the Munion were treated, should be remembered in our prayers and giving material support and prayers. This clearly uh, shows that this is one of the teachings of Islam and one of the um the factors that the Ramadan fast reminds us of on the home front the fact that the Ramadan fasts this year have come as soon as the general elections in the country are over is food for thought. The excitement and the elections themselves have quietly been taken over by the serenity that comes with the Ramadan fasts. Yet there are lessons to be learned from the elections in, relations, in relation to the Ramadan fasts. The religion, sorry, the religious and ethnic elements introduced into the campaigns by some people could be very dangerous. In the first place, the role played by, by governors in the North in ensuring that their party fielded a southerner for the presidential election was praiseworthy. Wasn't it rather shameful and indeed embarrassing, therefore, that some senior citizens of the same ethnic successful candidate objected to his emergence. Obviously, they did try, and they opened uh, threats, very serious consequences, but for the mercy of Almighty Allah. At the end of the book, with their PVCs. Hopefully, people would have learned much from this and would, le le and would allow peace to reign supreme in the country, especially in the spirit. Another challenge which one hopes that the spirit of Ramadan and Islam would help us to solve is the agitation for a Yoruba nation. Obviously, for religious reasons. The truth is that an average Muslim of Yoruba extraction who knows what it is to be Muslim and is conscious of what that really 
really means in his daily life, would certainly not be part Such a move from the north or from the south would appreciate the fact that Almighty Allah says that all Muslims are brethren despite differences in ethnicity. So no Yoruba Muslim should be part of that move. As I was saying, the loyalty of a sincere Muslim is first and foremost to all my love, not to, especially when it is obvious that the latter, that is the ethnic leaders, have a hidden agenda that is clearly. Allah, Allah is greatest, that Muslims in the course of the Salat implies that they have no option but to place him, that is Allah, and his directives first above anything else, no matter the circumstances. As patron and advisor to the Council of Muslim Youth Organizations, you. In, the, in one of the states of the Southwest, in the early days of the organization, I accompanied the leadership on a visit of the said state. One of the demands of the delegation was the establishment of Sharia courts in the state. So I get Islamic matters among Muslims, especially because such matters constitute not businesses, such colleges had no idea relevant law. The council had carried out research and was fully in the powers of the governor at the time to grant the demand. But Slim simply said, and I quote, go to the head of state and his lieutenants to do that for you. After all, they are Muslim, they are your Muslim brothers. That is not what I am here for. End of quote. Mark you, brothers and sisters, the head of state at that time was a Muslim from the far north, though the governor himself was an indigent of the said state in the Southwest. Clearly, for religious reasons, the governor did not see the Muslims and the visitors as brethren, though they were from the same ethnic group as himself. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, I invite you all to reflect on the lessons of the Ramadan fast and try to apply them in our daily lives for our own good, only, not only in this world, but also in the hereafter. For example, we should always remember that Allah has declared clearly 
إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون O you believe, believers, bear in mind that all believers, those who believe in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, are brethren, irrespective of racial or ethnic differences. Therefore, you should make peace between yourselves and your Muslim brethren. Do so with God consciousness that you may receive mercy from Allah. Brothers and sisters, I wish to thank the organizers of this lecture, especially Dr. Ade Duton, for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts on this very important subject. Sisters, for your kind attention. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, um, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, we, the network almost really wanted to <laughs> take it for us. But I think we do get that one other than the video that you would like to show. Um, we will throw the question open now um, for to take some few more questions. We actually do have up till 11.30 according to our timeline. So we have about 25 more minutes. Um, we can we indicate if you have any questions, you can raise up your hand or you can use the quiet key and a tab. Can we indicate uh, via the key and a tab? We have um, lots of um, um, our files and um, learned scholars on this platform. And the question can be really on this particular topic or any other topic um, um, for the, it can be on this topic or any other topic uh, regarding Islam, regarding the fast and regarding the Muslim life. Thank you very much. Do raise up your hand and then um, I'll pick you one by one for that. Thank you. Uh, we have one person, um, Sorry, the person on Infinix, you need to, I will allow you to talk. You need to also introduce yourself. We couldn't see your name other than your phone number. So we couldn't see your name. So do introduce yourself and then go ahead with your question. Infinix XX, please go ahead. I've, I've permitted you. Okay, I did talk more, please go ahead, sir. Um, Infinite Access, you are omitted, but we can't hear you. Um, maybe we'll go ahead and take Adi Dokmarem. Adi Dokmarem, go ahead, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. As Muslims, um, we are. Uh, hello? Go ahead, please. I can hear you. We are enjoined to seek knowledge uh, from the cradle to the time we are going to die. Um, in view of this, uh, this, I would like to ask a question. What is the position of Islam on astrology, which is a body of knowledge and uh, horoscope? Okay, um, Dr. Uh, Prof, would you like to answer that one first, or do you want me to no, take I would like more to... questions? Let me get uh, one Let's more take... question. Let me get one more question, sir. Okay. The first question is on astrology right. and horoscope. Um, Aladdin Bakari, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, the whole house. Um, uh, John, actually, um, Prof showed us a clip, and we've read about it all around too, about Islam being the fastest growing religion around the world. Now, uh, my own specific concern is that um, how prepared are we as present umas to ensure that we grow in the right sense of the religion and the tenets so that we don't go ahead and still breed extremists 
that is a common, uh, one of the commonly associated thing with Islam around the world. So that we make it as appealable to many who also will be falling in love with the religion and want to come uh, on board. So how prepared are we to continue to grow in a very uh, uh, progressive manner? What preparations are on ground? What, what are we channeling people to? What will we do to help them to settle into the religion? Thank you. Th thank you, Oladele. Um, Prof, so those are the two questions. I now have one on the line. Um, anonymous attendees, he said, uh, well said, sir, can we get a PDF note of the lecture so we can easily go through it? Okay, um, thank you. I will send the, we'll get the PDF note of the lecture and I will send it to you. If you are not within the, um, well, if you are not part of the WhatsApp group, kindly drop your line to me directly. I will add it to the WhatsApp group so that I can actually, you can also get it. Thank you. So go, Prof, go ahead and answer the two questions before we now take in additional thank question. Well, uh, well, thank you very much. Um, regarding the acquisition of knowledge, uh, of course, it is true that Almighty Allah um, very seriously encourages acquisition of knowledge. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, also um, charged Muslims to acquire knowledge wherever they, uh, they, find, they find it, even as far as, um, even if it would take them as far as uh, going to China. Now, China at that time was perhaps the, the farthest place uh, that Muslims could reach, uh, which is an indication of the fact that Muslims are required to acquire knowledge. Um, however, uh, whatever knowledge a person acquires, one must have a very clear, um, acceptable intention behind acquiring it. And that is why, even though a Muslim might come across some kinds of knowledge that are not permissible, such as um, um, you know, doing how to to find out what what is going to happen to X Y Z tomorrow belongs the knowledge of, of which Allah declares that it belongs to Him. You are not required to waste your time or waste your effort in acquiring such knowledge, even when one happens to know about such things. One's duty is to disprove the truth of it. For example, Allah makes it very clear in the Quran that it is the jinn who are uh, some kind of creature, different from human beings and different from angels that try to uh, find out what is happening in the celestial world and try to mix whatever piece of information they acquire with uh, you know, various kinds of lies and give to those who try to find out uh, about the future from them. So Allah you know, declares this forbidden and the prophet also declares it forbidden. So only, only true knowledge, only acceptable knowledge and only the kind of knowledge that would improve one's faith uh, in almighty Allah and, and, and all his teachings is permissible for Muslims to pursue. In any case, any such knowledge as uh, uh, astrology and, and the like um, cannot be proven to be uh, beneficial to mankind at all. And that is why it is entirely uh, forbidden to seek such knowledge uh, and, and try to, to make use of it. Now, regarding the second question that has to do with uh, um, the rapid spread of Islam in the West, you would recall that I did say that the spread of Islam, the rapid, rapid spread of Islam in the West is not a result of, uh, um, you know, 
of the use of force, it is, on the other hand, it is the acquisition of true knowledge, knowing about Islam, knowing exactly what Islam teaches, and you'll find that um, those who have uh, uh, accepted Islam in the West are those that have searched about the truth of Islam and uh, would know clearly that as Islam has nothing to do with uh, terrorism that uh, has been carried out in different, different parts of the world. And by the way, you will recall that I also said that um, the origin of modern Islamic terrorism, if, you, if I may describe it as such, uh, was actually planted by, by the enemies of Islam, as uh, it did happen in the case of Indonesia, I'm mean, sorry, uh, of uh, Afghanistan and, and Iraq. Uh, so Islam is clearly a religion of peace and has got nothing to do with terrorism. Even those who attacked the Muslims and killed them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, once they stop attacking you, you should not attack them. It is better to remain peaceful uh, in peaceful relations with them. And uh, Allah says, there is no compulsion in Islam. So uh, you can, we can rest assured that those who accept Islam may even turn out to be better Muslims than some of us. Uh, these are people that have said that they started trying to study Islam in order to uh, be able to criticize it, but they end up uh, you know, embracing the true teachings of Islam. I agree with you that we should not expose new uh, commas to um, uh, the influence of, of uh, uh, terrorists as much as that would make them accept Islam as a true and peaceful religion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Prof, um, there are two questions typed on the line, and it is actually very related to the answer you just given now. Um, so I really want you to take that one first in case there are additional things to add there before we go to um, our guy, I mean, our people online. Um, there's one from Animals. The question is, what specific simple things would you advise us Muslims to do in the country, given the current state of tension, both politically and economically? How do we as Muslims play our role as agents of unity? You truth, fairness, and justice. So now that's from the anonymous. For the, the second person is from Olabisi Ogulabi. Um, his question, our question is, what is the stand of Islam as regard provocation from other religions as seen before during the last and during the last general elections? So the questions are quite related. Maybe you can answer them together. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned in the course of my lecture, Islam teaches peace. And, and uh, um, perseverance and patience, even uh, in the face of aggression by other people. Allah tells us in, in Surah 41 of the Quran uh, how to uh, respond when someone does evil to us not equal. There are parallel lines that will never meet. Therefore, you, a Muslim, should uh, respond with that which is better. That is, when a person, a Muslim, whether Muslim or not Muslim, does evil to you, try not only should you um, uh, do evil to them response, you should rather do good to them. And then he goes further to say, if you are able to do that, 
you might succeed in converting an enemy to a friend. But he, La, recognizes, recognizes the fact that this is not an easy thing to do. First of all, you are saying I should not respond evil for evil, which means I should restrain myself from responding that way. But again, you are saying, on top of that, I should do good to the one that has done evil to me. And he says, it is not an easy thing. It is only those who have been endowed with uh, patience and perseverance that are able to do this. And it is they that will um, reap the, the good rewards from Almighty Allah at the end of the day. Also, at, towards the end of Surah 16 of the Quran, Allah says, if you have to um, retaliate uh, against someone who has done evil to you, you retaliate only to the measure of the evil that they had done to you. In other words, you must not exceed the, the measure of that, their evil. And you agree with me that it's not an easy thing uh, to actually measure its uh, um, in a way that you would not be guilty of doing more evil to them than they have done to you. That is why Allah says in the same verse, but if you restrain yourself and you are patient, both from Almighty Allah. So uh, in, in our country, where uh, some people did what they did uh, during the campaigns. The mere fact that Almighty Allah has saved the country from uh, falling into chaos, uh, first of all, the elections did take place, even when some people were prophesying that it would never take place. It did, did take place. <laughs> Relatively peacefully, there were, uh, you know, problems here and there. But generally speaking, we give thanks to Almighty Allah for enable, uh, enabling the country to uh, go through the elections. That in, in itself is enough, a reason for us not to um, re react, uh, you know, in like manner. Uh, and it is only when you treat an enemy uh, with kindness that you are able to convert them, uh, convert, convert an enemy to a friend. Um, I, I also believe that even those who introduced uh, religious uh, um, acrimony into this matter uh, have learned their lesson that after all, at the end of the day, to the ground, all their um, shouts fell to the ground. So um, the mere fact that Almighty Allah has done that for the country, not necessarily for the Muslims only, uh, is good reason for uh, Muslims uh, to be patient and um, you know show kindness and, uh, uh, and 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 peaceful relations towards even those that are what they did. Um, we should, as I said, give thanks, to Almighty, to give thanks to Almighty Allah and pray that Almighty Allah guides our new leaders to uh, lead us in a way that the country would emerge even stronger and more peaceful. Thank, thank you, sir. Um, we have four more questions online. Um, and we want to take it within the 10 minutes uh, lack of time that we do have. Adedo Kwaremo, you are muted. Please go ahead, please. And after Adedo Kwaremo, Lani Hum. After Adedo Kwaremo, Lani Hum. Kwaremo, you can unmute, please. Okay. Um, let me go to the. Okay, go ahead. Yes, you are permitted. Thank you. Go ahead. I can see your meter, but we can't hear you. Can you hear us, Dukun? Hello? Yes, go ahead. We can hear you Hello? now. We can hear you now, Dukun. Go ahead. 
I didn't raise up my hand to ask another question. Oh. Uh, okay, please drop them. Okay. Suleiman Lanyo, please go ahead. After Suleiman, Saadat Saleh. After Suleiman, Sahadat Saleh. You are muted, Suleiman, in case um, you are talking. Okay. While waiting for Suleiman, let's go ahead with Sahadat. Sahadat, go ahead, please. I'll meet and then go ahead with your question. Okay, um, um, Prof, while waiting for them, I have also enabled the third person in FedNex Auth 12. Um, if you can hear me, please go ahead and unmute. Hello, Salam Alaikum. Salam Alaikum. Okay, let's go ahead and take Sulaiman first. Sulaiman, go ahead, please. Salam Alaikum, Ramadan, can you everybody? So my question just to know whether this lecture will hold tomorrow or not. Like, like last year when it's all Saturdays and Sundays. So that's just my question. Okay, I the lecture is holding on Saturday, every Saturday, 10 a.m. I have already, I've already um, we've created a group for it where we're sending all the um, communication. But this link that you use to connect is the same link that um, everybody will use. I mean, you can use to connect in the previous subsequent um, uh, lectures. Um, so the allotted time is um, 10 a.m. every Saturday, unless there's an um, amendment which will communicate right away. And then we have, we have already lined up um, the lecturers for next week's Saturday, which is April 1st, and then subsequent ones you will be able to do. If you don't mind, you can chat your phone number to me directly so that I can add you to the group. Thank you. Okay, that will be done. Okay, so how that's why, please. Okay, you can you can direct it some super much. You can unmute yourself so that and then I'm fed infinix. Okay, while waiting for them, um, Prof, uh, well, there's one more question on the question and answer tab, and it is really, really related to what you have actually answered. Uh, last general election in Nigeria, um, it's just about the last general election and what we have done. But the really question is that, um, how can we use our population to our advantage as a group, sir? That's the main question that is actually been here. And then after that one, um, one more question before you answer that. Um, I have Infinex Ops 12 here that's actually indicated design. Go ahead, Infinex, go ahead, we can, we can hear you. Salam alaikum, salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi uh, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, in, you know, in the, indicate my name. I, I made a mistake while trying to install the pro my program. I'm Dr. Adekwaju. Okay. My question, right, sir. my question is that, uh, what is the international community doing about these uh, false accusations that are often labeled against Islamic nations and their leader being brought down, chaos caused in the country. You know, initially when we don't know the cause, when we, you know, I think the matter could go unnoticed. But when it has now become clear that it is so-called collateral damage that they used uh, in an orchestrated, uh, 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 you know, the story that was not true, and they now use that as a, uh, as a reason for causing enormous damage to a nation. What is the international community doing about this injustice that is uh, rampaged among the, uh, you know, the, the, the superpowers? Uh, you know, I, that's my own question. Is, is you know, just declaring a day of Islamophobia does not heal the wound. So okay. that's my own submission. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, one more sir, Prof, before you go. Mohammed Adilabu, please go ahead. Um, Mohammed Adilabu, go ahead, please. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everybody, Ramadan Kareem. Um, well, what I want to, this might not be a question, and that could be considered to be a question. Um, how do we protect our Muslim women in their place of work with respect to uh, using hijab and uh, allowing them, and even the whole Muslim um, folks in the at the place of work, not actually in the banks. So they will not be intimidated and they will be able to use their hijab and that shows, okay, they are Muslim and all of the rest. So that's just uh, my own question or comment. How can we try, I mean, as much as possible to promote this? Thank you. Okay, Prop, you can take it, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, the, the lies that are being told against um, Muslim leaders, Muslim countries, as I said, um, lies that have been uh, used as alibi in order to um, feel uh, justified to attack and take whatever they want to take from the Muslim world, uh, these are things that have actually happened. And uh, more and more people, even in the West, in the powerful nations, uh, have seen through this, uh, these lies. And I think one of the best ways to go about it is to uh, find ways and means of getting um, more and more people in the West themselves to, um, to see through these lies. The, the general uh, population of, the, of countries in the West, the generality of the people are innocent and it's only what they are told um, um, by, their, by, their, their, by their leaders supported by the media that they they believe and act upon. But we know that as, a, as a, um, <clears throat> free countries, as a, places where democracy is well established, when more and more people get to know the truth, they are not likely to support any government or authorities that tell lies to them in only in order to do evil to other people. Moreover, I believe that the, the very fact that Islam is spreading fast in the West is likely to make the politicians and, uh, and, and the um, lead, leaders of thought uh, in the West um, think twice about um, how they relate to the Muslims. I do not think that uh, any country in the West, any powerful country, even in, uh, even in the East, uh, would like to do to the people of Afghanistan or, or Iraq or uh, the West, particularly United States and, uh, and, and Britain, uh, supported by some other countries have done. And the mere fact that uh, over after a period of 30 years, uh, the Afghanistans have taken back their country uh, is an indication of the fact that no matter how far the, the uh, uh, on truth may have gone, um, truth will catch up with them. In any case, we are all, you know, um, inhabiting one and the same planet in this earth. And what happens in one part of the planet does affect uh, the others, such as what is happening now between Russia and Ukraine. So people uh, should get, be more careful. And this is the kind of thing that we should try to promote this, that is, this fact, should, we should try to promote. If you think that, you are free and you can do evil in order to uh, fulfill your own um, 
material uh, tendency to greed, um, it's going to be affecting other people. As Allah has made it clear in the Quran, human beings should steer, steer clear of any evil for when the consequences of their evil deeds begin to descend, they would affect not only the evildoers uh, amongst the people. So that um, relationship between uh, the North and the South, the, the Western world and the Muslim world is something that the current King of England, uh, King Charles III has been preaching for a very, very, very long time. I, I happen to uh, be very much interested and I've been following the developments over the period that one was living in that country. So um, we should do more and more of uh, educating our people and hopefully the people of the West will also uh, educate themselves. Now, it's unfortunate I mean, and I'm trying to answer the second question. So it's unfortunate that um, this issue of hijab has become so long drawn when in the first place, it should not have occurred at all. Um, I recall that uh, uh, there was a time just shortly after there was demand for a hijab in Britain, the um, Scotland Yard, this is um, the police organization in Britain, made special hijabs for female Muslim uh, policemen uh, and women, um, uh, police women, uh, which, and it also, I think it's also occurred in, uh, in uh, Australia. Uh, so if, we're looking forward to the West for everything that we think is, is good. That kind of example, we should not shut our, our eyes at. It's unfortunate that um, some people uh, still insist on preventing the use of hijab in the country, in our country here, despite the decisions of the, of the upper courts, uh, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. But, Having said that, I would not uh, recommend that uh, Muslims do more than we have done, namely peaceful protest or peaceful objection to um, the, this kind of treatment of uh, Muslim women and girls. We should still continue. More and more people will come on board. It may take some time, just as Islamophobia is already uh, being defeated in the West. Uh, it will come one day. It is true that a mere uh, declaration by the United States, United Nations uh, is not enough, but certainly you will agree with me that it is a progress. And we never, one never thought that the United Nations, which we know is controlled by um, the powerful nations of the West uh, to a very large ex extent could, uh, uh, endorsed that, um, uh, that, that, that declaration. Uh, you may say that, oh, many such declarations have been made regarding it's a good beginning. Uh, inshallah, we will get over it. Thank you, sir. We are well past our time. But just um, please permit me to just call one more person that was actually on the line before. Um, please, sir, that's, can you unmute and then go ahead and talk, please? You already unmuted. Just go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sir. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Mine is not actually a question, it's a comment I want to add to what I'm our father prof had earlier stated, which is to draw attention to the world's double standard. People are beginning to see through it. So since January, 2023 till date, there's been more than hundred mass shootings that has happened 
in the US with the most recent one two days ago. And if you take a step back, you'd realize that none of it has been attributed to any Muslim. So for that reason, it's not made so much press. So if it were to be a Muslim, a Muhammad, or a Sharif, or an Abdullah, it would have been a terrorist attack. Any other thing held constant. But because they are non-Muslims, it's been tagged mass shootings, 100 from January till date. So people are beginning to understand that Islam is not really the problem. Individuals are the problem. Big, people are beginning to appreciate Islam more than ever and are beginning to ask questions, questions that are supposed to have been asked years, centuries ago. But it's a good start, at least, is things are happening that non-Muslims are being part of. It's opening and shedding more light to Muslims and Islam in a positive note. So thank you very much for this, Gadrin. Thank you very much for all that has been said and will continue to be said. I'm really proud to be associated with this. This is my first time joining this session and I hope to be part of it, inshallah, continuously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adia. Um, thank you, um, Prof. We have um, we still have some questions about um, six and up, but we've gone past our time. I have uh, there's one more question from the um, question and answer tab here, um, which you've actually answered the question one and two there, but the last one is just uh, specific to you. To you, um, the person said, "Sir, what is the Muslim community and scholars doing?" to educate the current Afghan government to allow girls and women to good, to have access to good and quality education. Um, if you can just answer that one, we'll be able to. Um, for the people on the line, I'm sorry, um, Wahid Alani Perkum, Abdul Hafiz, and Mustafa, um, Al Nur, and Adewale, we have gone past our time and then we need to um, get in there. Please, inshallah, next week, um, if you do come in early, I'll make sure that I'll prioritize your questions um, next week, Saturday by 10 a.m. Thank you. Um, Prof, you can answer this one, and then Dr. Adetitan will run it up. Thank you very much. What Thank is you very much. What doing, yes. especially the various organizations regarding the situation in Afghanistan and um, allowing girls and women to have access to business and quality education? Thank you. Thank you very much. There is no doubt about the fact that uh, Islam encourages not just boy education, but the education of girls as well. And uh, um, there, there, there is no, no texts in the Quran or in, in the Hadith or in the opinions of scholars that uh, leaves out um, Muslim uh, girls uh, from being educated. <clears throat> and so um, wherever in the world uh, that uh, Muslim girls are being denied education, um, it is the duty of the, um, it is the duty of uh, uh, Muslim organizations such as uh, the Muslim World League and the um, the OIC uh, to find ways and means of uh, um, encouraging the the government concerned the the girls their rights uh, to education and in our own country for example because it's not only in Afghanistan that this kind of uh, um, uh, observation is made uh, in our own country, we we'll continue to encourage uh, Muslims to allow their children to go and their girls to go to school. And that nowhere in the teachings of Islam is the, the denial of education to Muslim girls is supported whatsoever. But having said that, I want to advise that uh, we exercise a great deal of reservation uh, when it comes to um, uh, happenings in the Muslim world being reported in Western 
uh, in the, through the Western media. Um, as we have seen in the past, uh, the, the media has supported the kind of uh, uh, unfriendliness that um, the ruling class in the West uh, have shown towards Muslims, not only for religious reasons, but for some kind of uh, material and political reasons. So I would rather want to know exactly from the Muslim sources in Afghanistan uh, itself or from Pakistan, which is so close to Afghanistan, uh, to know exactly what the situation is in this particular matter. I know that uh, of Af Afghanistan ladies who, are, who happen to be living in the West now have spoken out uh, on this matter. Uh, but I think it is necessary to cross check the authenticity of all this information from other sources. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran that whenever information is brought to us by some people about others, we should check and cross check before making a decision or taking actions so that when the truth becomes known to us at the end of the day, we do not regret taking actions wrongly. So uh, as I said, um, we, we sh sh there should be a way by which the Muslim organizations, uh, global Muslim organizations will find out exactly what is happening in Afghanistan on, on this matter and find ways and means of advising the authorities there as to what to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, Prof. Um, Prof, um, doctor, please permit me. One of our panelists actually wanted to address a particular questions on the question and answer tab. Uh, if you permit me, I can allow her to go ahead and then after her, you can now give the closing remarks. Amina Uluwa, oh. please could you omit and then you can, you indicated that you'd like to answer the question from um, Sefi, you could I see? Hello, Amina, can you, are you still there? You know, some people have left. I think uh, we should just keep to time. It's already, okay. we've already spent 15 minutes ahead of what was planned. Okay, so thank you, sir. You can go ahead, go ahead and give us- Okay, a... yeah. So I think all that is left for me is to say a very big thank you to our father, uh, Professor Dahoud, Ola Tokumbo Shitunaibi, even though the Wi-Fi created some problem midway, but I think we've used the opportunity of the Q&A uh, to cover up for whatever gap we may have had during the course of the lecture. Again, his responses to the questions speaks to who he is and what he has always advocated, uh, which is very Islamic very civilized response to provocations, irrespective of what we are, and the need for Muslims to continue to be law abiding, the need for Muslims to continue to articulate our position within the ambit of what the law has provided for. That came through in Prof's responses to virtually all the questions. Uh, we beseech Almighty Allah to grant you long life, very good health, so that we can continue to uh, benefit from your extensive and very expansive uh, knowledge and wisdom. Uh, to all the attendees, especially a number of our leaders who are also on the call, uh, we thank you for encouraging the younger generation of Muslim professionals for us to hold you together like this during Ramadan and even the uh, subsequent, so that we can share ideas on contemporary issues, deepen our understanding of our team, such that we can be responsible citizens of Nigeria and responsible global citizens. Thank you. And like our coordinator has mentioned, the plan is to have this series every Saturday by 10 a.m. And we do look forward to having everyone at the next session, uh, next week, Saturday. 
The coordinator has also created a WhatsApp chat room that allows us to even share ideas in between sessions and subsequent to that. Thank you, and Ramadan Mubarak to all Muslims. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you.